Welcome back to Hot Rod Guy Garage, and this is going to be another episode on 65 Mustang, so follow me along through the intro, and I'll be back. And alright guys, I know everybody's had a lot of input about the intro and everything, I'm going to cut it a little shorter than I usually do. In this video, we're going to come in here, I'm going to show you how to cut these floor pans out that are botched in this car uh, we're gonna get both floor pans out and then we'll assess the situation from there so follow along with me so the first thing you want to do when you go to cut out somebody else's previously hacked in work is generally you would cut out the area that your floor pan matches and ideally you'll want to butt weld these panels together and not overlap them uh, fortunately, in this case, most of these are overlapped, uh, looking at it from the bottom. So what I'm going to do, just to be safe, I'm going to cut on the inside their weld marks and uh, use a chisel just to remove the remaining. And on the other side, once again, they didn't do us any favors here. I'm just going to cut on the inside of this and then try to remove this seam afterwards so let's get to it so as you can see I've covered the dash the windshield and the steering column uh, nothing I'm gonna do is gonna hurt the chrome shifter or the white knob for now so I'm gonna come in here I'm just gonna cut on the inside of their weld all the way around this floorboard the pinch weld seam like I said before in the previous video it's already been knocked loose so, the passenger side will be the easy pan, the driver side will be the hard one. So, you always want to check up under the car and make sure there's no brake lines or fuel lines you're going to cut through. But at this point on this side, there is absolutely nothing in the way. So. This is the reason why I made my cut so low. <clears throat> As you can see where they overlap this panel right here. We still got plenty of good metal here. And this will let me remove this stuff and fit the new pan up flush to the old pan. So gonna be a lot more just kind of cutting this out in sections in order to save as much of this transmission tunnel as we can. So Let's get the cut. It's about 10 times harder to take out a hacked in panel than it is when it was installed properly. So, I cut the rear half of the floor. I just cut that floor pan in half with saw. Got it extracted. And I'll flip around and show you why I done it the way I did. So, I showed you this little window right here I'd cut before. Well, as you go up through here, you see the original floor pan here and here. And you can see we got quite a bit of an overlap all the way up around. So, in order for me to cut this straight, and get our new panel fitted. I gotta remove all this crap up here and get the original metal exposed so I can uh, get it all cleaned up and stuff. And as you can see guys, when you don't use weld through primer, and don't clean this rust and stuff off when you weld, you, your welds don't really, you know, stick. So, 
they sure didn't know what they were doing or just didn't care one. So the front half of the pan will come out pretty easy. It's it's loose. So I just got to finish cutting up around where their seam is. And then we can come in here and start grinding this stuff down. front half out they does some real artistic stuff in here that's about the nicest thing I can say so I'll flip it around I'll show you where I'm at right now and uh yeah all right guys we got a frame rail as you can see there's no rod in that rail uh, more boogery stuff you know here and there these were a lot of what was fighting me and where they were attached, they were attached pretty good and where they weren't, they weren't. So, got our other piece of floor pan up here, it's got to come out. Uh, our tow board, uh, they did put that in too, so probably going to have to address that, it's pretty ugly going up through our, but if it's not overlapped like the rest of this stuff, I may clean that up and just buzz that in for him save him a little money but just some straightening to do on the insides of the pinch welds and lots and lots of boogery stuff clean up on these rocker panels uh, this is not quick work uh, removing this stuff carefully is not quick work that's kind of why i just went ahead and haphazardly cut this pan like i did is where I can remove this stuff and try to save as much of the original metal as I can and try to make it a better job in the end. So, see if I can get that tow board out. Now that all the floor edge is extracted, you see exactly how they put that over. How it was attached, guys. Definitely a mess. So, I know it's not going to seem like it from your end, but it's been pretty much a full day right there. So, at this point, I'm going to clean this side up with a flap disc, knock down any more of those boogery welds. I have to come in there with a hammer and dolly and flatten everything out. And then we can work on extracting the other side. But generally, this video is going to be throughout the week, the rest of the week. I'll probably release this on Saturday or Sunday. So hopefully we can get this car prepared for the new pans to go in it next week. So if you like this kind of stuff, make sure you like this video, share it with your friends, and most importantly, hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you tomorrow. Well, it's the next day, and as usual, things have snowballed, and I've still not got the driver's side floor cut out. Because I got to look at that tow board a little more, it's going to have to come back out. So that means I got to pull the heater box out of the car, which will give me a better look at the bottom of the cow and see what we're dealing with. So let's flip the camera around, let's get this heater box out. So I got all the under dash stuff basically unhooked other than the heater hoses themselves 
and these are old heater hoses. I'm just going to go ahead and just cut them and replace them. But the hackery just doesn't stop, guys. It's they get the wires just twisted together under electrical tape for the blower motor. And, It just keeps snowballing, which I expected. Uh, no surprises, really. It just sometimes you have a little bit that looks up, and you're like, "Hey, this won't be so horrible." It don't always happen that way. And I'm gonna assume that the firewall's messed up down here at the lower lower motor bolt because it has a ginormous washer on it. So, don't know what that's about, but there's supposed to be a brace on the inside of the cowl in there to help support the heater box. And the brace is still there, but there's no bolt in it. So. Went to drain the antifreeze and The pet cock on the radiators broke off. So that was a mess in the floor. Like I said, I expected this stuff. I got that big old washer off there. Well, the hole's not messed up. I don't know why they stuck such a big washer on it. But I'm going to get these last two bolts out. I'll bring you along when I get to the inside. And all right, this is a good example of why I went ahead and pulled this heater box. You can see the firewall seam up there. I've got a flashlight on. You can just about stick your finger under here. It's got a piece of tar stuff up here that just jabbed in the corner and as you see there's a pretty healthy gap up there also so this gives a good time to look at the cowl and i've not looked up there at it and really it don't look all that bad on this side looks like they tried to patch a little small hole back there in the back huh but they've really not done no justice to this car. But at least now I know I'm going to have to have a tow board. <sighs> at least they not put one in that side, I don't believe. Uh, still got the original firewall pad all the way down there to the pedal level. So hopefully it won't be too bad over there. But look at the wiring mess. All the little blue zip ties. Blue zip ties on a red car. And while I was looking under this dash, you can see their nice little hack job around the radio too. Which none of that's really surprising to me. But, you know, I do have work cut out for me. So, let's get back busy and see what we can get into. So, well, I found the source of the cow leak uh, up here on the side of the bin up there. On little high up you can't really see up in here but there's a hole right there on the side in there uh, for now he does not want to put a cowl in it which is understandable that we just need to get the car safe at this point and he's not really worried about the water leak but the water leak is what causes all this rust and more than likely all this hack job that they've done uh, I did come in here and I removed the rest of that firewall pad. Uh, most because it was so bad. I uh, had a bunch of crust and nasty behind it. So, at this point, I'm going to start removing that tow board over there. That way that side's 100% ready. And then if we have enough time today, we'll start trying to cut this mess out over here. So, lots of fun stuff. So, the real fun stuff don't begin until start putting the metal back in it. So, 
We're getting closer to that point, unfortunately. It's not going to be today or tomorrow. So let's get that tow board out. And all right, uh, that top piece right there, I'm going to have to take the wheel off of it and grind some welds on that side and try to get something in here on the manifold side and grind some welds off there. But the good thing is the frame in the car, I know the light kind of drowns it out, but this is just dirt. Subframe so rails are probably the best part on the car. So, I'm going to get that out, uh, get all this cleaned up, all these cleaned up over here, and uh, yeah, then this side will be ready for new panels. And just a, another tech tip with this uh, roof mastic that they put in this car, I found a fairly easy way to remove it here as you can see it's coming pretty much right off uh, leaving no residue behind uh, except in just a couple of little places but basically what you're going to do you see how this up here is dull you're just going to heat this stuff until it this gets super mega shiny with no texture you're going to let it sit there for a second same same with this i'll we'll just heat it for just a minute and let's sit here kind of cool back down pretty much this stuff just kind of just rolls right off it's not a whole lot of fuss and in other news i got the rest of that old panel off and as you see they just put it over the rust and Got a big old giant band of overlap metal, which is never the way to put a panel in. So, yeah, a lot of cleanup, a lot of trimming that's going to have to be done. But it's always good that since they hacked this stuff in here like they did, that they did do it that way because it'll let me trim it out properly for the panel and get a proper fit. So, still a lot of work to do. Going to be a ton of work, really. So, I gotta get this frame rail blown out over here, and uh, I guess at this point I'm ready to start cutting the driver's floor out. Uh, one thing I didn't order was this tow board because it looked okay from the bottom. I really didn't know it was hacked in quite like what they done, and really didn't even suspect it'd been replaced. Uh, I did know it had some patchy stuff on up the firewall, which it looks like somebody else put that in uh, because it's actually patched quite a bit better than any of the other quality stuff on the car. So, yeah. So, a lot of the stuff from one man show, and every once in a while I have a helper, but not here lately. So. Let's uh, get this thing cleaned out and get ready to start cutting this other side out. Well, I've been working along and I forgot to set up the video, but I got the front pan out. This is the only, this is the original pan back here. This was the front pan that they had hacked in. Uh, more of the same that we've seen on the other side. 
Uh, yeah, it's pretty much a mess. So I come in here with my rattle chisel and I got the seat base removed. Uh, as you can see, all the rust. And Daisy comes back up here. But I just went ahead and done it with the air hammer. It's a lot easier than grinding off all these welds or drilling them out. Uh, because I'm going to have to cut this floor out roughly anyway. Because I am going to put a full pan in this side too. Most because of this. And uh, they didn't leave nothing to attach the front pan to. Uh, basically it was welded to the top of the seat pan. Uh, you know, the rear floor in it's not that bad. But... Might as well go ahead and put new metal in it. That way we don't have to worry about any rust issues under the seat bases later. So, that's where I'm at right now. As you see, the floor is out. And I just went in here with that air hammer and knocked the spot welds off on the rocker. Uh, I cut it on the inside of these spot welds on the torque box. And I did cut the panel low, like I did on the other side over here. That way, when I set my new panel in here, I can trim it to fit exactly how I want it to. So. We are officially at this point at ground zero. Well, I went ahead and come in here and uh, clean the rest of this seam off the old floor. And this guys is why you don't overlap panels and you don't put panels over rust, which this was original, but a very good example of why you don't do such things. You can see the rust in between. So eventually all that stuff up there and on the other side over there, and the quarters, and all that mess, would have done the same thing. So guys, it's 6 o'clock on Friday, and I'm going to call it a week. So, next video, we'll start fitting those pans in the car. I'll show you how to fit the pan to the car. Uh, wasn't a whole lot explaining what I was doing, cutting this stuff out, because there's no real rhyme or way to do it. You just got to get the old stuff out, because... When it's a mess like this car was, there's no right or wrong way to do it. Uh, like I said a few times in the video, at least they overlap the panels. And that will allow me to trim it up and do a great job putting the pans in. Uh, to the point where you won't be able to tell that they've been installed. So, if there is a bright side to this story, that's one on my side. So, if you haven't yet, make sure you like this video, share it with your friends, and most importantly, if you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button to stay updated on this car project, and I'll see y'all at the next video. Thanks for watching.